everyone and welcome back to Poppy Seed Mini. Today we're going to do part two of our dollhouse kitchen remodel. We're going to show you how to make some working drawers and add corners to your kitchen. In part one of our kitchen remodel series, we took apart and painted and reassembled all the pieces in the dollhouse kitchen. So if you haven't seen it, check it out when you're done watching this video. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is cut out all your foam core board pieces. Now, the dimensions for these are in the description box below. Remember, I always recommend using a fresh sharp blade in your knife to cut foam core board, and I recommend using a clear quilting ruler just because you're able to see your edges really clear. All right, to glue our drawer cabinet together, you're gonna take one of your four and five eighths by one and seven eighths and draw a guideline at one and five eighths. And you're gonna draw another guideline at three and three eighths. Then you're going to take the other two, four and five eighths by one and seven eighths, and glue them across both boards, making sure to line up on those guidelines. All right, and it should turn out like so. Then you're gonna glue it down on top of your two and one eighth by five inch pieces. I am using my more detailed hot glue gun for this part because I don't want extra glue sticking out anywhere. There's one. Now see how there should be a ledge that it's sticking out and it should be even in the back. Then you'll glue on the top piece and that should be the same way. Sticking out in the front and even across the back. Glue the two 12 and 5 eighths by 5 inch back pieces together. Make sure it's nice and flat. Take your cabinet piece and set it on your wall piece and then run a pencil line across so that you know where to glue. Then you'll glue it down to the wall piece. My glue gun is set at a high temp, so I have a little more time to get this set on. And it should look like so. All right, so I have all three of my drawers here, and what I'm going to do is glue around the edge of the drawers. And I'm gonna stick on a strip of cardstock around the edge to cover up the foam. I cut these strips at 3 16 but make sure you measure how thick your foam core board is before you cut your strips because sometimes they're not always the same thickness and I always like to check before I start cutting. I have bought foam core board that has been the same brand and everything and still the thickness will be 
slightly different depending on the board. To make the decorative trim on the door, I take a cereal box and a glue stick and I glue two sides of the cereal box together so I have a doubled piece. Once it's glued, I take my ruler and my knife and I'm going to cut a 5 16 inch strip. Now this is the size I did. I kind of think one fourth may have been a better size now that I've made one cabinet and looked at it with the kitchen, but it still turned out beautiful. So I'm gonna go with it, but you can adjust accordingly. Once you have the edges covered, you're going to stick on your trim piece. Now, be very careful not to get glue beyond where you're gonna to stick to because you don't want it on the part that you're going to paint because it will change the way the paint sticks to the paper. I glue on the top and the bottom first. And as you can see, I try not to go overboard on the glue. Measure and mark your strips. And cut them before gluing them in place. You may need to go back and trim a little more. And glue them in place. All right, wrap the edges and add the trim on all three of your drawers. Then it's time to paint. To start, I'm gonna put all my drawers in my paint tray face down so that I can paint the back side first. And I only do one coat on the back side. The other thing I'm going to paint is one sheet of white cardstock. Okay, now that I got the back sides painted, I'm actually gonna flip my box over and put them down face up. And I'm gonna spread them out a bit because I'm going to be painting the sides as well as the tops. So I'm gonna go and do one coat of paint. The two colors of spray paint I'm using today are the Satin Eucalyptus and the metallic finish gold for the hardware. I've brought in my drawers, and this is after one coat of paint. And now what I'm going to do, actually I'm gonna take them off my paint tray here. All right, now that they're off the paint tray, I am just going to sand them down with a 1500 grit sandpaper, so it's very fine. This is a finish, finish grit for sanding. But if you take the time to do this, you're going to get a way nicer coat of paint. And it's just gonna get rid of any of the impurities, you know, especially if a bug decided to jump on your project while you were painting it. This is how you get a nicer, cleaner look. Because remember, we are using paper and the set that we're working with is plastic. So we want it to look as perfect as possible to match with our plastic pieces. All right, once you've got your pieces sanded, go ahead and wipe them down so there's no residue on them. Now, I forgot an important step. 
much. Stick your drawers down to whatever you're painting on so they don't fly around when you're spray painting. There we go. And we're ready for coat number two. And this should be your finished coat unless anything funny happens and you need to do a resand and one more coat. All right, to make the top and middle drawer, I'm gonna take a large jumbo craft stick and I'm going to mark it the width of the drawer bottoms. And I should probably draw a proper straight line with a ruler. So I cut this straight and I'm using my heavy duty Fiskars to cut straight through the popsicle stick. I will add the link for these because they are fabulous. The width of the drawer is four and a half inches. So you can also just measure and cut. And then I'm gonna use my three in one glue to glue it to the back of the drawer. Measure the width of the side. Again, take your ruler and do a nice clean line across and cut. And then I'm just going to use this to do the second one. Then you're going to glue on the two sides. Make sure to scrape off any extra glue. For the top drawer, you'll need two 5 8 inch popsicle sticks. So these are like the large size, I think, something like that. So you'll take your drawer again. Measure and cut the back piece. Remember it should be four and a half inches across. Confirm and make sure it's the right size. If there is extra glue bubbling up, just go ahead and scrape that seam with a leftover piece of popsicle stick. Measure and cut the two side pieces again and glue them to the side. Like so. The other thing we're gonna make is the little handles. So I bought these wooden buttons from Michaels and I am using the medium sized buttons and you'll need let's see oh you only need two because you'll need three handles i think i like that one better and then i'm just going to take my hand saw and cut off part of the button almost all the way through. I'm just gonna go back and cut the rest of the way through with my blade. Now the reason I'm using the handsaw is I noticed when I was trying to cut through with my blade last time, 
um, I was getting a lot of cracking and breaking my buttons. So that's why I'm using the hand saw. It's also a good idea to take a piece of sandpaper and sand the edge smooth so you know you're gonna have a smooth contact surface along that button. Once you have all three cut and sanded, stick them down on a piece of cardboard using clay or tacky. And then I'm gonna take them outside and spray paint them gold. So the next thing we're gonna do is take that green sheet of paper that we painted and we're gonna cut a strip that is three sixteenths thick. Like so. Cut at least four strips and two pieces that are four and five eighths by one and seven eighths. First, I glue the large panels to the sides and make sure your glue is smoothed out so you don't get any lumps. Next, glue your strips down the center pieces. Then you'll do the sides. You'll also run a strip across the top and the bottom, all the way around. I also have a little white showing here and on the bottom, so I'm gonna run a strip there as well. Doing it this way means we don't have to take this piece out and spray paint it. and we get that nice clean white look inside the drawers. Before gluing on your drawer fronts, make sure you test your drawers because I don't know what I measured wrong, but my drawers are too tight. So I'm gonna go back and cut them down slightly and re-glue on the other sides. <sighs> Sometimes we make mistakes, but Good thing I tested before I glued the drawers on. Okay, all my drawers are fixed and can glide in and out. Very important. And don't get them stuck in there before you put the door fronts on. It's never a good idea. Okay. But they're all tested and good to go. I'm just gonna use my three in one again to glue the door fronts to the drawers. Now, you're gonna take your drawer front and center the drawer on the back side. And the bottoms should align, like so. I have about a 3 16 overhang on either side of the drawer. Once your drawers are glued on, you're going to take and find center of each drawer and mark it. Remember these are five inch drawers, so you're marking at two and a half. And then we got our gold handles here. We're just gonna glue those in place. If 
like to line up all my drawers as I'm doing this, just so I make sure everything looks not only center on the drawer, but center with the rest of the drawers. Like so. Once all the drawers are dry, you can just slide them into place. Now the bottom drawer is just slightly bigger than the middle drawer. To make the corner cabinet, you're going to glue together two three inch pieces. Again, make sure the stuff gets pressed down and it is really flat. And that you scrape the edges if there's any extra glue. And glue together the two, two by five eighth inch pieces. Take the two two and five eighth inch squares and cut out a half inch by half inch square out of one corner. So your pieces should look like so. Glue the bottom square to the two and five eighth inch side. Then you'll glue on the three inch side. Glue on the four and five eighths inch by two and one eighth inch pieces on both sides. And then you'll glue on the top piece. like so. Cut a one inch by four and five eighths inch piece of recycled paperboard. And then you're going to crease it in the center or score in the center. And then fold. Glue it into the corner of the cabinet. Take your leftover piece of green paper and cut a five by five and one fourth inch piece. Then I'm going to fold it in half. or a half inch on either side of that fold. Like so. Then you're gonna glue it into the corner. Again, remember to smooth your glue out so that it's even across the paper so you're not creating lumps or anything. Press that into place. Glue down both sides. To 
look like so. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is placement. Now, since you have a corner cabinet and an extra drawer cabinet, there are all sorts of different versions of this kitchen that you can make. Like I could add a second corner over here and then I can turn my kitchen and make more of a U-shaped kitchen. Or if I want a shorter kitchen, I'll pull out the extra pieces and I can add my fridge next to my stove and I just have a small L kitchen. So there's lots of ideas that you can apply to your doll rooms or your doll houses. The version of the kitchen that I'm doing is about 22 inches long, but I like how you can see everything and it's nice and open. So let's add some countertops. I want a marble countertop. So the first thing I did is cut a two and one fourth inch strip out of foam core board. And then I'm just gonna measure from my corner cabinet to my drawer cabinet and get that width. And it looks like I'm gonna need a strip that is seven and three fourths inches long. Once I have it cut, I check to confirm I have the right size. And this looks good. You will have a small overlap right here, but we're gonna come back with the counter going across this way to cover that part. Glue a strip of paper to the front edge. Next, I cut a seven and three fourths by three inch piece of marbled contact paper and I stick that on the countertop. And wrap it around the edge. The reason I add that strip of paper is to give it a nice squared edge. Otherwise it tends to um, like dip in because of the foam core board. All right, here we go. Before I glue my countertop on, I am going to glue these two pieces together. It's okay that there's a seam here still showing. We're just gonna add a backsplash after this. All right, so once that countertop is in place, then you add the cabinets that you want to sit next to it, which I want in my sink and my dishwasher. And you're gonna measure to see how long of a countertop you'll need for that. And this says nine and a half. So I have my countertop cut and I'm going to flip it up and I'm going to mark where my sinkhole is. And then I'm gonna measure how far out my sink goes, which is an inch and seven eighths. So I'm gonna measure across at an inch and seven eighths, and then I will draw up from those lines I marked previously. Okay, once we have this drawn on, then I wrap the front edge with paper. With my sink pattern on the bottom, I cut a nine and a half by three inch piece of marbled contact paper and apply that. to my countertop.
and wrap it around. Now I'm using dollar store contact paper and I can still see my pattern through here. So I'm just gonna take my knife and cut out the hole for the sink. And you might need to cut through the front a little bit to get those corners right. All right, then I slip that in place and test out my sink in there. And it clicks in perfectly. For my backsplash, I chose to do a white subway tile. I will have this as a printable on my blog and the link will be in the description box below. Now, I want mine to be a little shiny, so I'm going to cover it in laminate adhesive liner. And this was three something at Walmart. I like the fact that I don't have to do strips of tape. I can just cover the whole entire sheet of paper in one go. Cut yourself an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of the laminate or paper. And you're just gonna wanna peel one edge off. Just kind of start. Oh, I can do this. Okay, there we go. So what I like to do is I like to start by folding that like first inch down. It's not helping that it's curling a little. Okay, and then you're gonna line up the edge with the paper. And then you're gonna slowly pull and press as you go across. And now my tile is shiny with no seams. Okay, I'm gonna start at one end and work my way around the kitchen. And I know I need a five inch piece for above the drawers. But I want my tile edge to be against where my uh, oven is. So I'm actually going to go in to one edge of the tile and it's a little over five inches and cut. And then from there, I'm gonna cut over five inches. This way, I know that when I line up with the stove, my tile should line up perfectly. I'm also gonna cut the very bottom of the tile. And then you can either double stick or glue this into place. I'm just gonna use double stick tape just in case I need to make any adjustments. Now I'm taking a look at my stove and I need to cut in the center of my tile black splash and then glue that on working the tile down so that it lines up with my other piece. Once you have it cut and lined up perfectly, you'll tape it in place. Next, you'll cut and stick in your seven and three fourths inch piece and make sure you've matched it up with your stove piece so that your tile matches. Cut and stick in the piece above your sink and dishwasher. The last piece I stick in is the corner piece. Okay. 
Oh my gosh, you guys, doesn't this just look amazing? The only other thing I wanna add in today is two floating shelves on either side of the oven. I have a lot more ideas, but I guess I'm gonna to have to do a part three. To make my shelf, I use a giant craft stick. The first thing you're gonna do is measure and cut your stick so that it is about seven and three fourths inches long, just like your wall. And then cut it down. Then I take my knife and I cut three eighths off one edge. Like so. I take a strip of foam core board and I'm going to use it to line the shelf. So I draw around my shelf and then cut that to size. Then I take my three in one glue and I glue the top of the shelf to the board. Once it's glued down, run glue across the front face and glue down the strip. Now I leave a little edge on the top and a little lip on the bottom. To stick my shells onto my wall, I'm just drilling in through the backsplash and the foam core board. And then I stick two toothpicks through either side. Now I'll do three or four for my longer shelves, but these are my five inch ones. And then I'm gonna take my shelf and actually I'm pushing the toothpicks pretty much all the way in so that the shelf can sit flush and I can line it up against the tile. And then I push my toothpicks into the shelf from behind. Like so. Oh, all my drawers just fell out. <laughs> okay. And then I just clip the back of the toothpick off. Like so. And then I'll add a little glue. Hey guys. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll really enjoy what's coming up next. Like these stools for the island. Or how about some of these new mini brands I've been designing for your kitchen? That, and you're not gonna wanna miss our Timu haul because I have found some amazing new things to add to your kitchen. You guys, don't forget to subscribe because you're not going to want to miss what's coming next. I hope you'll like, comment, and share this video with your friends. And as always, have fun crafting.